Hello, it's Aga from RPZ Artist. Today, another video from your request. How to use Unwrap UVW modifier. Probably one of the most troublesome modifiers in 3ds Max. But as always, I do my best to explain this as simple as possible. Are you with me? Let's begin. We'll divide this topic into a few parts. This is the first part from this series, so I begin from the basics. Let's start from explaining what this modifier is for. So the Unwrap UVW modifier allows us to control how the texture is mapped. It's more complex than UVW map modifier and gives us a possibility to edit mapping by hand or with a variety of different tools. In a lot of cases, UVW map modifier will be enough. But sometimes we need this extra skill to not be stuck somewhere in the middle of the project, right? By the way, if you haven't watched the video about UVW map modifier, I put the link in the corner. Okay, so what we basically need to do is flatten the object. In order to do that, we need to somehow unfold the 3D object and lay out into a flat surface. To make it easier for you to understand, I show you the example with small armchair pillow. Let's take a look. So first, we need to think where the seams are. So for sure you can see this black piece here. So this will be the separate element of our pillow. Then you can see that there is the seam along the pillow and it creates three different pieces of the material. So one, two, three. When we take a look back, there is one piece of material here. And of course, this will be another one. So basically, to lay out this into the flat surface, we need to divide this into five different elements. So one, two, three, four, and five. So in the 3D software, we basically do the same. We take the 3D object and divide it into a few flat elements. So let's open 3ds Max. We'll start from something simple. I create a simple box. I'll change the size. Now, let's add the Unwrap UVW modifier. Basically, there is no need to use Unwrap modifier in this situation, as we could simply use box UVW map modifier, but it's just easy to start with something simpler. Okay, you can see that the new panel full of options appears here. Click at Open UV Editor to see the main window we'll be working on. Now, here are the main selections option. You can use polygons, edges, and vertices. You can select them both in the UV Editor and in the scene. There are different ways we can map this. In this case, I show you the flatten mapping option. Select all polygons, go to mapping, and choose flatten mapping. You can see that we have different options here. We'll use the default settings, I just changed the spacing between the polygons to make it easier to work on. Click OK. You can see that now we have six separated squares, which are basically six sides of our box. And we could theoretically stop here, but I would like to show you one more option, so we'll work on this a bit more. Our goal here will be to create one element from these six squares. i show you what I mean. You can see, for example here, how an unfolded cube looks like. So we have a cut here, and here, and here. And we can make it flat, as in the other example. Ok, let's go back to the software. You can notice that when I'm clicking on a particular edge, there is another one highlighted as well. These are the edges that are in the same place, so we can join them together by using Stitch Custom option. You can see that now there is one piece. So this edge here is this one. We can click here to select whole elements, not single polygons. You can notice that other polygons are separated elements. So we can combine them together. Click the edge, additionally select the one that is highlighted 
and use Switch Custom option. Let's do a few more as we get the result we're going for. Great, it's one element now. By the way, let me know in the comments if you like me explaining different topics with objects in real life as I did before with the small armchair pillow. Here you can see that we have some arrangement options. This option scales and arranges the selected element to fit the space by the longest side. By clicking this icon, we're able to move the elements. Here we'll turn on rotation. And here we can scale. This is a combination of all previous ones. So we can move by dragging the arrow, scale by holding the corners, and rotate by holding the middle points. Ok, so we rotate this by 90 degrees, and we can again use this option. Here we can choose the maps that will help you to unwrap everything properly. So you can easily see now that the piece of map which is visible under this square is projected at our object. We can also use a checker map. Here we can scale by value. Let's say we want this twice bigger, just type 200. Easy, right? Ok, now I show you another cool option. As we have our unwrap done, we can render the UVs. Go to Tools, Render UVW Template. We can change the settings here. For example, the resolution of the map, or colors or render map, but we'll leave it as default. You can play around with these options if you like. You can notice that we have it rendered as a flat image. Save as JPEG and let's go to Photoshop. I'll set different colors to different size just to show you how it works. It can be helpful if you want for example the sides of the box to be different colors, textures or whatever. Save the file and see how it looks. Let's quickly create the material and plug our map to the different slot. Great, you can see that each color is on a different side. Let's go back to Photoshop and I show you one more thing. Let's say you want to paint something on the texture. In the center part of the box there is no problem because edges are connected to each other. I will show you how to paint on edges that are not connected. We have to select this part and cut out this part of the red brush. Also duplicate this part of the cube. Next, rotate it and position it this way to omit the other edge. Now you can paint the remaining part. We have to cut it out again and position it in the correct place. Let's delete the duplicated part of the cube.
When it's done, save it. Now, let's replace the current texture with the one we've just created. You can see that the red brush meets perfectly on the edges. I think we are going well so far. Are we ready for another example? Now, let's work with the cylinder. I show you other cool options. Let's apply the modifier. You can see that we have an issue here and there are green edges. We can easily fix it. Let's use UVW Mapping Clear and convert to Editable Poly. Let's apply the Unwrap UVW modifier again. Now again, we need to think how we can unfold this. Great, I like this example so we can see that we can separate the cylinder into three pieces, two circles and one rectangle. I show you another way of mapping now. As we know how it should look, we can select where we want to cut our object. So first, select top edges and create seam from them by using Convert Edge Selection to Seam. Seam imitates our cuts. Let's do the same with the bottom. Now, we need to set one more seam, which will go vertically. You can select these edges one by one, but I show you how point-to-point -point seams works. It allows you to add seams between chosen vertices until you exit this mode. Okay, let's open the UV editor. You can see that the polygons are welded together. We could also use the break option, but I show you this one later on. And here we can use for example quick planner map. Ok, but we cannot just simply use planner mapping with the side of the cylinder. What we can do, we can select all polygons belonging to this element by using this option. And now let's use a pelt map. Belt map is really useful. It helps to make a complex element flat by using virtual stretcher and springs that somehow pull them up. There are different options here, but we'll leave this as default. Okay, the best way to understand this is to see how it works, so let's click Start Belt. Okay, we have it in the form of a flat surface. Great, click Commit. Now, we'll use the Relax option. Awesome! Let's rotate this. We can change the amount to make the effect stronger. We can scale it and arrange it. Let's turn on the map to see how it looks. Awesome, we're done. Great, I think we've done a good job today. I hope you enjoyed this video and you're ready for the next parts coming soon. Thanks for watching. Also, don't forget to like this video if you found this interesting, share it, subscribe and do all these wonderful things. See you guys in the next video.